currently. Paste it in. The changes. All right. <laughs> he has like that. Hand. Okay. Um, you can actually go ahead and kick it. All right, we're kicking it. And we are live. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, well, what a bit of enthusiasm today. Yes, and sorry for starting about 15 or 20 minutes late. but we Oh, I'm just... sure they enjoyed the pre-show we had. Yeah, we were just yeah. always... Yeah, because, uh, of course, Tom is automatically sus. Uh, may, uh, all we were doing is fishing, upgrading our characters, getting them up to level 10. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I do not have COVID like Trump. <laughs> Nobody ever accused you of it, babe. <laughs> Dusty. Zoom tight. Okay. Thank you. All right. And welcome to another Saturday of Living City of Raven's Bluff. Yay! 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 Applause. <laughs> applause. <laughs> you know, a little applause side goes on off. I should find one of those and put it above my computer station dun, here. Dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, anyways, um, today's adventure is actually one that I've been looking forward to for a while for the simple reason that, um, uh, Monroe is going to get something he's been wanting for, uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, switch, uh, switch. The name of the mod is Close Quarters. Uh, subtitled A W.M. Ranky Adventure. Uh, this was originally written by J. Allen Fawcett. Uh, who is a game designer now or these days? Of some note. I think he went to work for Wizards. I'm not sure, but I think he did. Hmm. Okay. And the blurb, which I'm about to put into um, the, the chat window. window. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, please do. That's all we're asking, babe. Just the blurb in the chat window. It is as follows The city of Raven's Bluff has been nearly completely rebuilt there was still a few projects you know post hurricane projects whatever uh following the war and life is almost back to normal whatever normal is <laughs> right <laughs> however wm ranky one of the city merchants has a bit of a problem with some lost workers He's looking for a few heroes to help with his remodeling project. Mm -hmm. The task seems simple enough, but after all, this is Raven's Bluff. When is there anything simple? <laughs> yeah, an adventure recommended for characters levels 10 through 12. This module will cost two day units. Oh, so there's a little bit of travel, but not much. Oh, it's Mm. All right. And as the module begins, it is evening. Um, let's see. Is Sakura fixing dinner like she always does? Uh, no, actually, you guys decided to go out and eat. Yeah, we're... <laughs> Sounds good to we're me. We're splurging. Yeah, I mean, come on. Um, the girl's got to eat something after she's had a very near-death experience uh, the last time out. This uh, is true. Very near-death. 
Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we no. just grazed it. Now, as you know, it has been a fairly long time since the war over on Raven's Bluff ended. Technically, about eight, nine years. The citizens have but managed to rebuild to its previous splendor, and many of the famous inns have been refurbished and taken a steady crowd of local merchants, retired soldiers, and adventurers alike. Tonight is like many other nights. Business is fairly slow. Um, you guys... Mm. What are we up to? You guys are up to seven tigers. Oh, nice. nice. That's the place to put us. We live at seven tigers in, don't we? No, we don't live there. We actually probably live anywhere. I place. said no. Well, I, that's our... <laughs> that's kind of our hangout, though. Yeah, that's kind of our hangout. But anyways... Uh, the Seven Tigers Inn is moderately crowded, and the food, as always, is delicious. Very good. <laughs> but the rumors of adventures seem to be few and far between. Among the many patrons to come in to the inn this evening is a moderately well dressed man in a dark blue cloak with a circular red and white clasp. He seems to be making his way from table to table, talking with people for a few moments, shaking his head in obvious disappointment, and then moving on to the next. After a few minutes, he shakes his head in utter disgust and heads to the bar. Grabbing a large mug, he bangs it loudly on the bar to gain the attention of everyone in place. My apologies for the interruption, ladies and gentlemen, but I admit to being at my wit's end. My name is W.M. Ranky, and several friends of mine from the guild halls have informed me that this establishment is often frequented those, by those of an adventurous nature. The task I have is a simple one. I require the assistance several persons to help me in a small venture over the next two days. If any of you are interested, please join me at me for the table and let us discuss the business at hand. I now return you to your scheduled inebriation. That is <laughs> nice to know. Smiles politely at the barkeep and makes his way over to a table near the corner of the room. Yeah. And I was hoping to enjoy a few. I looked at everybody and goes, um, job time? I was hoping to enjoy a few days off for one. All right, all right. Hey, and, uh, she's, she looks over at Trelana. Somebody that, somebody's going to try to buy something big. And wooden that floats. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so we need to work. All right. Okay. Yeah. Besides, I'm still gonna pay off the Temple of Torn plus the Temple of Mistra as well. Yeah. Well, uh, Torlana wants to buy a boat. Oh, yeah. Torlana wants a boat now. Remember. How else am I supposed to get my goodies? She. She doesn't make it known that she's in the Four Ravens, but she's also in the Pirate Liaison part of the Four Ravens, same section that Quincy was in. Ah. Come on, she, she hero worships Quincy. She needs a boat. We actually yeah. worked it up, but, um, but I also want to check and see how many day units we're going to use in mods before the end of the year, before she buys one. And once I do find that out, I will, um, after the mod today, I will actually go through the mods for the rest of you. Oh, sorry. Slight interruption. Speaking of mods, did anybody find any fault with that schedule I set out to the end of the year? No. 
No, not really. Okay. I actually have it written down. Okay, so... So we are, we are good for the end of the year, and I've already started scheduling in the stuff for next year. Okay. So we're going to go see the guy. Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. So, in talking with Mr. Ranky, several days ago, he hired a couple of workers to clear out an old home that he purchased. The two workers were a guild-recommended carpenter, a dwarf named Ceylon, and a serving girl from a nearby inn named Miggin. The two were paid half their fee up front to prepare half day Manor for the arrival of its new owner. They were supposed to be finished with their task two days ago and have not returned for payment. A runner was sent to the house and reported no sign of the workers, although the carpenter's wagon was parked out front. Mr. Reinke doubts that the runner ever entered the home, but since the workers did not respond to any calls, he assumes something is amiss. Is it a wagon that would have had horses? Yeah. And the horses were unattended to? They were pretty much picketed, um, tied to a branch. For two days? For two That's days. Cool. Yeah, well, there, I mean, there's grass. There's I'm grass sure. There's grass for crop and everything. I'm and sure you'll they, get the chance to talk to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, talk to them with a mug of the, the Carpenters Guild is placing a great deal of pressure on Mr. Ranky to find Ceylon and has suspended all pending work until the journeyman is found. They firmly believe that finding Ceylon is Mr. Ranky's responsibility. Um, Mr. Ranky's main business is real estate speculation. So basically it, flipping houses. Yeah. Yeah. This work stoppage is a major inconvenience. He's in a bit of a jam, and he is definitely not the adventuring type. Well, luckily for him, we are, although we are um, probably going to be uh, charging a storber in this. Yeah, but as explained, I need the money. That given the previous owners, he's afraid that the house may be haunted, and he has neither the time nor the courage to check things out for himself. Which means we got to do it. In addition, he would like you guys to fully inspect the house for any safety hazards that would trouble the new owner. He is willing to offer each of you 100 gold pieces each for your service. Plus okay. a letter of reference from him regarding the quality of your work. He can uh, he will be able to provide half payment for the job at the site tomorrow morning. Is this reference going to be that we want to keep? <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, be surprised by um, that. There are two business terms that he's unwilling to negotiate on. First of all, you must not damage the house. Any damages will be the responsibility of you, and you must pay for the damages. Secondly, you're not to remove any items from the house without returning them directly to Mr. Ranky. As the current owner of the house, all items are his until such point as the sale of the home goes through in two days' time. Removing any items would be unlawful and would be an act of theft. Well, we certainly can't uh, have point that. Point at me, now. will you? <laughs> the, this doesn't sound very um, beneficial to me. <laughs> we could use the work. Gold, 
Yeah, and I'm the one being pointed at. Hello. <laughs> 50 gold a day. Honestly. Come on, Talana. You're rather those, sus after those, all. Those poor wretched, those I poor know. Down in Crow's End, 50 gold is a year. Well, those, those, those poor bastards in Crow's End aren't the one doing the job. And I've got plenty of ducats right now. <sighs> it goes uh, high as 200. Is this. He'll go what as high as 200? Yeah. And he wants I... me to pay for damages on his house? If you damage it. Yeah. If you damage it. If well, you're he'll, he'll have to prove I damaged it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, that's all right. If he accuses me of something, I'll, I'll deal with it then. We just got to watch Andrea and her flame strikes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, arrow, arrow holes to be plastered over, but I don't usually miss anyway. Okay. So, uh, do you take the job? Yeah, yeah we'll take the job there. Otherwise, uh, this is going to be a very short stream, and I'm sure people will be disappointed. <laughs> Yeah. You're right about that. <laughs> Dude, I, we you know, we can have fun without doing that adventure. I'll get into a I got, bar I'll fight go and again. get a bar fight again. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> we will tell you that the home was purchased shortly after the war and that the previous owner, an elderly man named Gregorian Halfdane, disappeared and was declared dead. Um... Pretty much, if you are agree to take this job, let's open up there. You know, one. Okay. Okay, there we go. Here we are. Got it. Hmm. He oh. likes to be on the up and up. Okay. Be it known that the other side does need does hereby agree to provide professional services to WM Rain Cave for the date of this agreement for two days. The services provided are to be included a thorough search of the premises and grounds of a uh, half day manner with the express purposes of discovering the fate of the uh, two wayward employees, uh, Salon and Megan. In addition, these services uh, include an inspection of the premises and grants to discover and deal with any creatures or objects that would be a threat to the owner of the premises. Additional services may be negotiated as needed between the parties. So, mm. yes. The signee of this agreement acknowledges that any and all damages to the house resulting from activities relating to the aforementioned investigation are solely the responsibility of the designee. Furthermore, all items not of free will contained within the present within the premises and grounds are the express property of the owner, and removal of such items constitutes theft punishable under the applicable laws of Raven's Bluff. Sign here. <laughs> exactly. Pretty <laughs> much, you got me the other sign. Legal mumbo jumbo. Legal mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because pretty much that's all that that contract is. It's a bunch right. of legal, legal Bumbo jumbo. jumbo. Uh, okay, yeah, is that everybody is. signed? We have to do everything above board, yes. Yeah, let's let's do it right then. Okay. Now, once you've signed, and he'll have you start checking out the house in the morning, you still do have a little bit of time if you want to do some nosing around town. What do we know about this, uh, Mr. W.M. Ranke? Well, through your numerous contacts, uh, Sakura at the Clerical Circle and the Knighthoods, uh -huh. Arroyo at the Knighthoods and the Merchant's Guild, uh, Morova at the Wizards Guild, um, Tolan and whatever organization she might be in, and but and such like, and so on and so on. W.M. Reinke is an established merchant who has been in the city for a couple of years. He moved to the Raven's Bluff shortly after the war and has been very involved in the acquisition and sale of real estate.
He's flipping houses. Most notably, old homes and other built businesses. Um, seldom does he do any undeveloped land. He owns at least six other houses within the city, all acquired within the past 24 months. So business has been good. All homes were purchased from the city and deposits were made for in gold and gems. While he still maintains an outstanding balance with the city government, so far all of his payments to the city have been prompt and complete. Meaning, meaning he was making his house payments. Um, Half Day Manor, the place that you want to be asked to check out, mm -hmm. uh, has been vacant since before the war. During the war, many of the city's records were lost or destroyed. Until the recent sale, the home had belonged to a member of the Half Day family, as far as anyone remembers. Gregorian Halfdane was the last known surviving member of the family. He was last seen in just a few months before the war and has not been seen since. He was declared as casualty of war by the city, and since no heir could be found, the city assumed ownership of the property. Hmm. He, uh, he never married. The Halfdane family were an odd family, rarely participating in city's functions. Many citizens feared the family and believed they were responsible for failed gardens, skin rashes, and other neighborhood mishaps. So, either they were warlocks, sorcerers, witches, or necromancers. <laughs> that would be up Morova Valley right there. The family estate was sold intact to Mr. Reiki for about 60,000 gold pieces about five months ago. Hmm. There's no record on how the transaction was negotiated, simply a bill of sale with a stamp of the office of the exchequer in the file. Um, since Actually, I don't have it that spell in memory. And I don't think, um, I don't think Trelana or, uh, Motrelana well, can't cast anything, but Sakura uh -huh. and Jacqueline and Kira cannot, uh, uh, what spell are we talking? Any type of divination spell. Unfortunately, I don't usually take this, so I wouldn't have. I could, I could take them. It's not like uh, they are um, verboten. Yeah, and it's just it's just not Morova's favorite. <laughs> for, for me, ver uh, verboten would be enchantment, charm, and illusion. Okay. What about Salon and Megan? Do we learn anything about them? Uh, let's take a look. Um, Megan came from the uh, Merchants um, Guild. Uh, she is an employee. Um, Salon was a member sent over from the Carpenter's Guild. That's all you know about them. Okay, so we don't know whether they were new or older or... Um, Salon was a dwarf. Somewhat advanced in age. Of, um, he was a good... Um, he was a good carpenter, but he was 
by no means a master craftsman. He was pretty. He's pretty much able to, you know, do pretty good work on houses. You know, as a general handyman. So. So. Huh? Let's, uh. God oh, bless you. So. You signed the contract. I certainly do. And yep. so. You guys. Can um so now it is evening uh, pretty much close to midnight, but before breaking up with the meeting with Mr. Ranke, he did give you the keys to the house. Hey, okay, very good. And do we do we want to start this uh, in the uh, morning, or? Uh... How about you, man? How long does it take to get there? Oh, it's in the city limits. I'll go oh, probably tonight, especially, especially if it's haunted. That'd be more fun. <laughs> Only I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Jesus, you and Morova. Yeah. I think the rest of us would agree that we can wait till morning. You can go carouse it. Mm -hmm. Actually, Morova is like, yeah, go to the place at night? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Let's go. That's why we said only Declan and Morova. <laughs> the yep. rest of us are waiting till morning. Yeah, some of us aren't crazy, especially after what happened last time. I know. You know, especially with the time change. You know, you know the song, how the song goes, right? Hello, uh, darkness, my old friend. Uh, be here at 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know that song a lot. <laughs> oh, oh. oh damn it, we still got a month till the time change. Yep. The first. Yep. Not right, exactly well, looking guys, forward to it. If these guys are all chicken, I'm just going to go find a conquest for the evening. Okay, you find a conquest for the evening. And yes, she's cute. What do you say? You're you, cute? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know who Declan reminds me of? Who? Yeah. No. Anybody ever watch How I Met Your Mother? Yes. Uh -huh. Barney. Barney. Oh God, yeah, yes, definitely Barney. He, he's a Stinson, that's for sure. <laughs> yep, he's definitely Barney. <laughs> okay, so as such, um, as such, he uh, truly adheres to the bro code, so. All right. So the next morning, dawns bright and early. Kako do the do. Okay. And you, of course, are given the. Uh, it is one of the um, Hatton Manor is actually one of the city's older homes. And was, of course, recently by inhabited by the members of the Hathane family. Okay. I want to check on the horses first thing. Okay. Uh, it is an extremely elegant ho home uh, in the Temple District, somewhat close by the Harbor District. Uh-huh. 
Oh, fairly close to us, then. Yeah. Um, the home itself is on a fairly large portion of land. It is a split-level building with a stone foundation and an upper level made from stout wood dyed a rich brown color. The grounds were obviously once well-tended, but are now overgrown, meaning that the horses definitely had a shitload to eat. Yeah. Um, there are several doors and windows throughout the home, but all the windows are currently covered by heavy shutters. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the horses, now, um... The horses are still tied up. They uh, have been unhitched from the wagon. That's good. So well, there, are no, there are no harness skulls, but... Do you reckon you speak with them? They might know something about... Well, that might... I really goes, I can cast speak to animals. Okay. What? Sure. Aurelia? She waves her hand, kind of like mumbo jumbo. Hi, horses. How are you doing? <laughs> she said speak to animals, not with animals. Sis, really? Uh, and then, and then she Declan, it, please. She into, uh, her trademark giggle. <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? Hmm. No, no you probably murder. <laughs> now, having said that. I am going to do, uh, actually, let me, there. Okay, everybody out, and if you take a look, there is only one map today. And, aha. And that map is, honestly. Found it. <laughs> the map of the house. I like. Actually, this came, I like right, from, this came right from the module. Oh, God. All right, so we're just going to ignore the fact that it says creature location here. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty much it would be way too much trouble to draw the damn thing out. <sighs> okay, so that is where we are. Um, actually, these, um, the dimensions I was able to stretch a map out to that actual, you know, the, if you see the 40 foot over here, that's actually uh, 40 feet. Yeah. And that's actually 100 feet. So this is actually to scale. All right, I suppose we can. Ha! <laughs> huh. Quality sneezes. Thank you. Thank this you. This one we start breaking much. windows. No, we do not. We are not we breaking have the windows. Key. Yes, yes, but I would like to perceive uh, that door there because I do not trust anything right now. You said this is a two-story building? This is a split-level two-story building. All right, right here, second one. Um, okay. Well. My perception's at a 30. Okay. The door is locked. Gee, I... Uh, come in handy. Uh, yeah, we well, um, we have key, key <laughs> over here. I just with the key in front of Tolana's face there. Uh, key. Yeah. Try ah. this first. Wow. Remember. Not Turn it on to the block doors. Not Especially since that one was a 40. What a concept. <laughs> Thieves don't normally use keys. <laughs> 
Yeah, do we? And, and, yeah, remember, we're not supposed to break anything, either. And tell that to Declan, he's the one wanting to break windows. There's, I point to Declan as well, it's like, Declan, no. Whether no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, hell no. Um, if there no. was a rash of hacking, I seen him running by. So once again, the Manor Home is a fairly large structure located in the northwestern part of the city. Uh -huh. A simple wrought iron fence that separates the grounds from the city proper. The home is the split level structure with a solid stone foundation. Beautiful wooden siding make up the second floor and matching shutters cover the windows throughout uh, around the house. The main gate is open, and you can see a small wagon with carpentry and other supplies parked near the home. Hey, a a um, tarp that once okay. covered the wagon lies nearby, probably blown by a windstorm. I the, want to uh, check for tracks. You are going to check for tracks. Okay. Yes, the upset. Oh, the place. Uh, then I would definitely need a survival check from you. Okay. Uh, That's what tracking is under now, survival. Survival. Uh, Fortunately, I failed to assist you. No, oh, actually, no, that would be enough. A really will aid and assist. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, goodness. Damn, damn, Talama. All of a sudden, with skill here. Rest. Thank you. <laughs> I've had to do it for a lot of years now, remember? I really don't help for shit. <laughs> okay. Um, by checking all around the house, there is the two entrances in the house. Right here. And right here. All the windows have had the shutters drawn and outlashed from the inside. Checking out the wagon, the wagon is small enough to be pulled by uh, usually a single horse, but uh, salon usually used to. It is filled with planks, a pair of mallets, two boxes of nails, a, a few small pots of pitch, a saw, and other normal carpentry tools. There are also a broom, two pails, soap, and double cleaning rack. If you look closely, you will see several tracks around the wagon, including uh, two human-sized foot footprints and a set of smaller footprints. What about no dwarven size? Yeah. The smaller boot prints are about four inside. Oh, okay. And then two sets of human footprints. We only knew of one human, aside from someone who may have made a door? Or two. Did come from? Two humans. Remember, uh, they sent a runner here to try to find out what happened to Steelon. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That might be his footprint. Okay, what door are you going into? Whoever has the key gets to pick that. I guess the crew up. 
<laughs> well, it's the courage side that one. She's got the key. So, Sakura is the key master? Yep. Who's the oh my god, I just watched Ghostbusters today. <laughs> <laughs> the key master of ghosts are there. And, and it, which is really fun because you heard about what happened to Rick and Moranis, right? Yeah. yeah. So many cold cock of in New York City yesterday. On or on Thursday, when did you? It was yesterday. Okay. Anyways, where's Dennis? Uh, so, so, uh, where do you want to go in? Dennis, where are we going in? Okay, I'm back. <laughs> You were up in La La Land. Yeah, it's, now I was actually uh, getting some uh, chocolate milk. Chucky Momo juice. Yes, chocolate. It goes well. It goes well with macaroni and cheese, you know. I love the mac and cheese. What about chicky nuggies? I don't have any of those until uh, next Friday. Workers is poor this week. Well, that's true. All right, so. So, um, I'm going through number door number one. Yeah, it seems to be a good place to start. Okay. Okay. But do we actually use the key, or is Charlotta going to break down doors? No, no, you can use the key. Mm. Sorry, I was gone there for a minute, guys. All right. Ow. Okay, opening the door. Move yourselves inside the room. The front door opens into a large anteroom and a long hallway. There's a little light. Coming in through cracks in the shutters. However, the light from the doorway provides ample illumination. Mm -hmm. The room is very clean, and the cobwebs have all been swept away from this area. So, um, a tarnished brass coat rack is just inside the door, and you can see two traveling cloaks hanging on the hooks. One is a soft purple, and it's human size, while the other is a dark brown in color and dwarf size. We're not supposed to touch stuff, right? right. We're not supposed to take it away there, but investigate it. This door... Open or closed? Oh, the only open thing is the, uh, an archway leading into area three. Uh, all other drawers are closed. There's also a set of steps going up. Well, this place looks relatively small. I mean, I don't want to suggest yeah, it. About, about ten know. feet, about ten, maybe fifteen feet wide. And um, maybe what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 long. Where um, would you like to go? I'll go through that archway. Okay. Heading into area three.
Here, actually, I guess. Was that an archway? No, it wasn't an archway, it was a door. But. Uh, the door swings open, revealing a large study. From so floor to ceiling are massive oak bookshelves, which Moreau is eyeing acquisitively. <laughs> Covering most of the walls. Those walls without shelves are adorned with paintings, both large and small. These paintings all appear to be portraits, and there are small plaques attached to a few of the frames. Um, examine some of these plaques here. A candelabra sits on an end table near a large leather, leather chair, and several tall, ornate candelabras are located in the various corners of the room. Uh, many, I'm gonna examine. Many, of the, many of the candles are new, although some seem to have been used. The entire floor of this chamber is coated with a thick layer of dust. Oh, so it's been in this No tracks in here. Uh, now you said there was a. All right, you said there was some uh, placards on uh, some of the. Uh... Yes. All right, let's uh, examine those a little. Okay. Um, the portraits, um, um, pretty much all look, I mean, you can tell there's a family resemblance, namely dark eyes and distinctive hawk-like features. Uh, there are a total of six portraits in all. Reminds me of Vernon Condor. Mm-hmm. Um, no tracks. Uh, let's see. I don't believe there are tracks in here. Um, two of the um, oh, the largest one is of a um, human male. Uh, he's dressed in fine silk robes. And carrying an ornate wooden staff, looking down at the painter. Judging from the background of the portrait, it appears that this painting was painted in this room. And I'm leaving. And there is a name placard. It says Gregorian Half Day. Uh, two others. Oh, the paintings are all of men. Two others also have nameplates. Uh, one reads Kenneth, K-E-N-N-A-T-H, and Elanian, A-L-L-O-N-I-A-N. Uh, they look a little bit grim. Both human? Uh, now make me a perception check. Yeah, you had, I, I stepped out. Yeah, that's a 34. Okay, yeah, you find it. Where are the S's? Uh huh. Um, it's a secret trapdoor leading downstairs. Okay. I want to check the other rooms of this floor before we go anywhere. Um, I want to check this door, Tom. Okay, that door there. Okay, it is not locked. I'm just gonna open it if you're inside. And I, since uh, there's no other exit out of this room except for the one downstairs, I take it we're gonna join Chris in area four. Yeah, we can do that for the moment. There, it's like, uh, yeah. Are you just wandering off your, by yourself? That's rather sus. I'm only like, I'm only like ten feet away. Um, we don't want to go downstairs until we check this floor, right? Right. This room is obviously a dining room. 
and is, despite the dust, a marvel to behold. The, ro the room is one of the largest you've seen in the home, and a huge table dominates the center of the area. The table appears to be made of cherry wood, or perhaps a dark oak of some type. Vine carvings. <laughs> yeah, nice editing, Robert. Carvings, <laughs> not cravings. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like something was pregnant there. <laughs> Fine carvings adorn the table legs, and matching carvings can be found on each of the chairs. There are easily enough chairs for well over a dozen guests. On top of the table sits three large candelabras covered with tarnish. A linen tablecloth, now yellowing with age, covers most of the table surface. A set of massive cabinets matching the table sits along one wall, and crystal and dishes can be seen inside their glass doors. A beautiful crystal chandelier hangs from the ceiling, its arms covered with cobwebs from long periods of neglect. What about the floor? Is it dusty? Um, yeah, oh yeah, dusty. No tracks in here. I'm gonna go it's back out. <laughs> well, wait a minute. There one. is a. There is a. Okay. Because there was okay. also also from this room, there was another exit right there. Yeah, I don't want to mess with. If there's no dust in. Oh, if it's obvious that it's got dust all over and no footprints, they didn't walk through. Okay. So we are going into area five. I mean, other people can check if they want. I just, I'm trying to find these people fast. That's just my motive. Okay. So moving yourselves into area five. Oh, by the way, the candelabras, um, if you appraise them, they're worth, um, I mean, Quite a bit. <laughs> uh, pretty much, you uh, if you I'm want to knight. buy all the dishes. Okay. This is in the city. I'm not even. That doesn't even cross my mind. Okay. Okay. You go into this room, and this is the kitchen. This area of the home is also very large for the size of the home. It is well equipped, and um, pretty much, yeah, it's a about it's a type of kitchen where you know you could create food for a lot of people. Comes in handy for dinner parties. Um, I could have a field day. Only yeah. a few. Only a oh, few you would have a field day, honey. Are out right now. And our, um, this room, obviously, kitchen has not seen much use recently. There are large counters and cabinets along the walls, and there are a number of pot racks hanging from the ceiling of the room. The main stove and oven are large and are covered with a uh, thick layer of dust and some grime from the last times they were fired up. A small pile of wood sits near a small stair that leads to a cellar. Um, you find pots, pans, knives, cooking utensils, uh, a number of spices. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And there is a a stairway leading down. Yeah, check that out first before we uh, continue. I would go on and finish this floor off. <clears throat> We've got two ways downstairs now. Uh, one, one, one down and one up. 
No, we got yeah, and we got the secret. Oh, that's true. Um, we only got this one other room over here. Yeah, we could do that first. Okay, so you're heading over to the other room. Is it locked? No, none of the interior doors are locked. So you okay. come over to this room. The door leading to the front room of this house is so similar to others found in the home. It is made of stout, carefully stained wood, and a small tarnished brass door handle slides smoothly, releasing the latch on door. Inside, you see a well-appointed room. Dim light from the shuttered windows play across the area, creating wide shadows. Although there are several couches and chairs and numerous tapestries hanging on the wall depicting wildlife and other artistic scenes, uh, a brandy stand sits at the end of one of the couches is fine crystal bottles and glasses covered in a thick layer of dust. Mm, a, like a... a small bottle of the dark liquid is visible despite the dust. The area immediately in front of the door is clear of dust, as is swept away with a quick circular stroke of a mop. So they started cleaning up in here. Who? Someone started cleaning in here? Yes. But they didn't get very far? Nope. nope. In the center of the room are a mop and a pile of rags. And something shiny seems to be catching a, blit, a bit of light from under one of the couches. Let's take a closer look at that. I'll go lift the couch. Oh, well, you would go under. lift the couch. Yep. You prefer I'm the one bending over? He's trying to get a closer look. Man, I hate it when they don't put the damn stats for the monsters in. I mean, Queen G, you've got to do it all yourself. Yep. Uh, let me do this real quick. Not a problem. Um, if you'll excuse me, I'm headed off to the little girl's room for a minute. Got it. Pretty much, as, I'm pretty sure this is in BCR1. Yep. BCR1. You want us to roll initiative? Uh, we will in a second. I just gotta put the stat block into the module since okay. they decide not to. Right. Do you know where my middle high school, Jack, my middle high school, Lydia is? Is it over there on the chair? 
check the bathroom. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So what are you guys doing uh, as he's listing up the car? Well, I'm taking a closer look, seeing uh, what might be on. Even I'm wondering what's underneath it. <laughs> well, your, um, your curiosity will have to take a little break um, to... Um, be uh, sated, so to speak. Okay. As As you lift up the couch, okay, let me zoom back in. From each wall, uh oh, uh. Cloakers. Not good. Not good. <laughs> the tapestries. The tapestries are cloakers. Oh. I thought that, I thought that one was a baby one for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one home. <laughs> uh oh, we have to damage his tapestries. <coughs> okay. Just putting the hit points in, and then we will roll initiative. So, what happened exactly? These are the tapestries, or they came from in them or behind them or something? They yeah, are the tapestries. Okay, let me get them. Okay. Um... I'll just put a label on them real quick because I'll do an uh, individual initiative. So you can probably guess what happened to the cleaning girl. Uh, probably uh, yeah. dead. Are these things, like, they're not spectral, though, right? They're... No, they are corporeal. So, and these guys have been missing just yesterday or just a couple days ago? Uh, they've been gone two days. Yeah. So one of these things might have pooped on the floor after eating them. <laughs> oh God! Gross. <laughs> There's a tap, some poop under one of the tapestries. If Andrea wants to kill you, I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, please do. Just don't step in it, okay? 
Definite ew. Okay. The cloakers. Wow, the cloakers going to plus seven. Okay, here we go. Rolling a knit on the cloakers. Man, these are fast cloakers, too. Mm, yeah, no shit. Okay. Finally, we get a slow one. <laughs> Morova will, of course, roll his mm -hmm. initiative. Hoo hoo. And Raya. Cleric speed. Okay. Hey, that's my job. <laughs> we know. Declan, Kira, Marola, Trelana, Sakura, Raya. Okay. So. We will start with C2, who will come out and attack Morova. Uh, oh, all to confirm. I think that got it. I think that did get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That does confirm. So. And who's that attacking? Morova. Morova. But Morova's got a friend now. Let's just say Morova's gonna have a friend when Morova gets done with this. You know how Morova is. And Seems like everywhere we go, it's gotta have a friend. Morova takes 18 points of damage. Ouch. <laughs> That's a lot of ouch. Okay. C3 is definitely going to move up and attack Trelana. Oh. And that'll miss. Miss. Declan. I ain't playing no clubs. <laughs> 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 oh god, that's hilarious. <laughs> Cloak busters! <laughs> it's something weird in the sitting room. <laughs> Cloak busters! <laughs> okay, go ahead, Declan. Oh. oh god, we are a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Does this thing have mass? Like it's got a body? Like, yeah. It just look like a, like it's got a belly and stuff, or it's just a floating piece of cloth. Uh, it's it, looks like, it looks like a floating piece of cloth. Um Well I just I, I'll see how I do with arrows. Um <laughs> <coughs> I'm just making my regular attack. 
Okay, let's see here. These bad boys are AC-19, so... Hit! 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 Hit and crit on the rapid shot. And... Then did you kick your boots of speed in? Yep. So... Alright. Fifteen. And eleven is twenty-six. Thirteen is thirty-nine. Forty-nine plus seventeen. Well, guess what? Who did you shoot at? C one. Yeah. Bye bye. And your hasted shot. You still have your hasted shot if you wanted to shoot at somebody else. This one. Okay. And this one will then take. All points of damage. Okay. Kira. I'm burning down a house. Yeah, no, no. Uh, no, you are not burning down a house. No. no, no. You can turn it into a dog and rip at it oh, with your I mouth. Like you can also attack with your scimitar. That's what I was getting. Okay, so you are going to move over to this one then? C2. Right. That's only a five foot step, so you can get all your attacks in. I already have my attack plan. Your cemetery up yeah, click the web. It should show. Do a ta nope, no I showed one. Um Yeah, hit it again. And then There you go. Ooh, that'll definitely hit. Uh get two attacks, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first, they will both hit for a total of 15 damage to the clucker. Morova. More than 70 million people in the United States go to the movies each week to get away from their... Well, Marumba would love to do this. What is Marumba doing? But uh, he won't. On C2. Magic Missile. Magic Missile. That figures. <laughs> that figures. Because we're... Otherwise, he just fireball and count on everybody at least make the save. Okay. Trelana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. C3 attack you, but you're also in range of C2. Uh, actually, you're being flanked, but uh, you're a high enough rogue, you can't be flanked. Okay. So. Which one you want to? Which one you want to attack? I'm gonna try to take out the one that took me. Am okay. I allowed to duel? Yes, you are allowed to duel, but you will not get sneaky dice because he's uh, already moved. He's already moved. So dual wielding hit nineteen is dead on what you needed. So the second Nancy, attack hit. Oh the third attack missed. 
for the attack hit. Uh, were you kicking in boost of speed? Hell yeah. Okay, oh, so the haste attack hit. Off, so, uh, attacking C3, 4, 9, and that's 15. 15 and 7 is 22, and uh, uh, 28. So you do 28 points of damage to him. I can do quite a bit of damage. But hey, he deserved it. You don't mess with me. You know that. That's a miss on Tirana. Sakura. Uh-huh. Well, um, we just cannot have this happening. Uh, bestie Tirana there. So, uh, C3, I'm going to pull my bow and shoot. Okay. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sweetie. Trying to see if uh, this new belt was actually worth it. Wackadoodle. A lack of drill in progress. Oh, missed the first one, but you scored a hit on the second one for eight points of damage. So, <clears throat> and I appreciate you. And then Aurelia goes. Aurelia will come down here and attack once, and she will pound on C three. For 16 points of damage. 36, 46. And kill C3. So then she can cleave and finish into C4 and do 17. I appreciate both my besties. Mm hmm. C2. C2 did not like that, Morella. Okay. C2 is going to use like one, of, <laughs> C2's gonna use one of his uh, special attacks. Oh, crap. We all know what that means. Someone's about to get cloaked. No. Yeah. Actually, he's going to do the moan. <laughs> uh, oh. Ow. That's my back. Ow. Son of a... Ooh, right there. And I think I'm going to have to put something on that tonight. Oh, ow. ow. Okay, here we go. Ow. Oh, fudge. <clears throat> Where is my little sister? It's say fart knockers. <laughs> fart nuggets. Ow. And I know it's late, but somebody forgot to do the disclaimer this afternoon oh, yeah, uh, we right. are a little late for that there but yeah if well, you're younger than you 13 <laughs> yeah we'll do it tomorrow okay oh come on uh, we've been doing this for 59 episodes now now you guys should know the routine yeah yeah they okay. should everybody in the room uh-huh Needs to make a will save. A uh, will save? Don't say, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a... 24. 
Okay, Don't there's two minute. Ooh. Morova failed. <laughs> Morova, I need you to do better. Yeah. Morova, really, you actually made it? Holy shit. And then again, on um, Morova's roll, I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, everybody made it except for Morova. And Morova... Yes! <coughs> knowing Morova. ...is panicked. Oh, no! As a, as a wave of fear. Gasp! ...over all of you. Surprise and terror! Okay. Declan! Yeah. All right, I'm going to end this party. I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to finish with this one. Got it. Okay. Bye-bye. Hit, 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 and hit. Uh, 12 plus 9 is um, 21. 30. Okay. So after your third attack, this one drops. Yep. Same and way. your rapid shot and your hasted attack will go onto this one yep. for a total of 23. He's still up. God, he's hurt. Okay. By the way, yeah. bad bad news. Um, no time to die. Just got pushed back to next. Really? Yeah, sucks. I don't. And that's <laughs> the last one, or they had one more coming. Uh, the next Bond movie. Well, yeah. I think it's the last one with Daniel Craig. We'll see. Yes. Yeah, but uh, God, I mean, so I've got to wait what six more months until we see Rami Malek. Yeah, because is he the new Bond? Or uh no no he's yeah. the villain in this one. Yeah, he's the villain. Yep. Okay. God damn it. Kira is going to go up and whack a doodle. Kira, you. I think I hit the wrong button. There we go. That will hit for eight points of damage, almost killing it, but not quite. Marola is panicked. What can he do? Uh, run. <laughs> run around in circles. Uh, but of course you're gonna uh, <laughs> run, run by us. And it's like, while I take care of this son of a gun. Wow. Right, Kill it. Did I get a tag you... opportunity when Marova runs past me? <laughs> and I'm gonna slicey dicey. Uh, yeah, oh, please do. Please do. I trip him. Am, am I allowed to duel? And I laugh. Yes. <laughs> you don't really need to duel, but yes, you're allowed to duel. There we go. Okay. You kill him on your first hit. You probably do kill him on your first hit. Yeah, you do, because it only had three hit points left. You just ginsu the rest of the carpet up into little shreds. <laughs> hey, 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 it's not it's not a tapestry, it's just a living creature, that's all. She ginsus it up so uh so dang well that she can make little uh, you know, she lifts it up and holds it out. And little, um, you know, little, cut, little cut out bats and everything. <laughs> little cut out Marova's well, it is away. close to Halloween, so okay. <laughs> let Marova do what he wants. And two, two rounds later, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> he comes Marova back in. Yellow. Mm. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> no. no, I help Ow. him up off the floor. Okay. Like Looking around the room, you do some come across some remains. Oh, the girl. Of, how many? Yeah, is it just the the girl it? and the dwarf? Oh, dude. got both of them. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, Me Megan's items include the mop rags and um, her small locket. The locket is a simple golden heart with a clasp. Inside is a small etching of her family, Megan with her mom and dad. It's for we know, I mean, we know what happened to her, but it's still messed up that this person would have, like... Located under one of the couches is yeah. Salon's remains, including his tool belt and his earring, which was catching the light. That explains it. The earring is magical. Yeah, I was going to say, we're probably allowed to have that. Maybe. Yep. No. Yep. It's not part of this house. Yeah, it's not part of the house. It's part of the, um, part of the, uh, uh, remains of the people who got, um, the couches and chairs are all of exquisite quality and craftsmanship. Uh, the whole area except for that by the door is dusty and in need of good cleaning. But it's obvious that this was once a very nice sitting room. Um, if the shutters were open, it would uh, have great natural light. The brandy set is valuable, but of course it belongs to Mr. Ranky. Right, so right. we'll leave that if is. If you do take a sip of the brandy, it is um, of high quality. Not exceptional, but high quality. And if you want to have a drink, you can. Good. That'll depend on my constitution at this point. <laughs> Um, do you, do you guys want to, I mean, investigate the rest of the place, or are we just going to take their bodies back, or what? Well, do you, you want to, um, actually, when Ro comes back in, he goes, well, you know what? No, no. Let's, let's, uh, have a little bit of, um, no. help, uh, help our Morova, Morova. No, 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 no. We're not no, animating. Listen, I'm not animating anything. Okay. <laughs> as long as you're yeah. not animating anything, we'll be okay. What do you want to I'm, do? Then? I'm just saying, let's help out our employer. And Morova casts this. What is Morova oh. cast? <laughs> We are talking Morova, so that's kind of a who knows. Okay. Press, Press the digitation. Well, to clean oh, things up, okay, that. that would... Yes. Oh. And he's going to pretty much hit all the f rooms on this ground floor with a prestidigitation spell to clean it up. Sure. He will open up the shutters, open up the windows, tear it out, Press the digitation, whoosh, all the dust goes out the window. Um, and we pretty much have cleared the ground floor. Nice. Now there are the stairways leading up, a stairway and a secret door leading down. Well, let's, uh... Do you want to check the upper uh, floor first, or uh, head on downstairs? Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, either one. I don't care. You're right, let's, let's head on down. Look what I did. What did you okay. do? Okay. Oh, okay, you're going down via the Press secret the door, right? <laughs> We're going to the secret door? Yeah. I help, I help clean. Only one room. Okay. There, and I'll do something for you guys. I will guidance you all. <laughs> you guidance. So you, <laughs> you so you clean that. better. <laughs> right. You yeah, I'm just standing where I'm looking trappings. cute. That's normal. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so actually, you guys are going downstairs. Go down the uh, yeah. So, let me. Um, how are those tapestries? Did they revert? I mean, they're like now bloody tapestries. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, they're cloakers. 
we should probably should we like roll him up and take him back to that guy? Yeah, the creatures. Can, uh, yeah, the creatures. But we can actually drag their carcasses back to the guy to show them what we found and what we killed. I mean, yep. we didn't steal his freaking tapestries. Yep. Okay, so we're going upstairs. No, I thought we're going down. Downstairs. We're headed down. Uh, I was trying to find out on the map where I'm going. <laughs> okay, so if you zoom out, you go to lower okay. level. Yep, yep. And we're all in the lower level. Um, this area of the house is dusty, but obviously has seen a lot of use over the past few years, although not recently. There are two large stone doors leading out of the room. Uh, let me zoom over here. Uh, one is, of course, over here. One, of course, is right here. Uh, there are a couple small shelves on which sit a small lantern, a tinderbox, and a couple small flasks of oil. All right, which door would you like to go through? Fifty fifty shot either way, so the uh, pick uh, Eeny Meeny Miney Mo. <laughs> well Um there you go. Yeah, let's go through here. Okay, you're going into area three. All right. Hey, that's the cellar maybe, right? So we went down. I think that might be the cellar. It means there's probably wine in there because it's under the kitchen. Right? Mm, very possibly. <laughs> what are we going to do with Declan? He wants to get drunk. I just have to. I don't have to get drunk. I can hold myself really well. <laughs> Whoa! What is that? I got a con of fourteen. Okay, let me clear this. And a charisma twenty-four. So I'm a. I'm a. I'm not a sloppy. You're cute. Okay, this door opens up to reveal a well-appointed and fairly large wizard's laboratory. Oh, hello, no. They left a snot oh. gallum in here? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Mar <laughs> and Marova goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, okay, first uh, up, Marova. No touchy. There right, are I know, certain, of I know a certain alchemists that might be able to outbid you for this. Okay. There are um, a couple of counters along the walls and a few broken bottles lying on the floor just inside the door. There are several candle holders with nothing but piles of wax in their holders. The entire area is a bit cold from, and the dampness from the ground seems to be seeping into the chamber. Located in the center of the room is a large wooden pedestal. Upon the pedestal is a large, closed, leather-bound book. Its quality is obvious even from this distance due to the soft reflection of gold coming from its gilded pages. And... Hold on here. Uh, 
I guess I'll have to use this one. What the hell is that? Yeah, that's what I said. What is that? Oh, really? No. Nope. That is a trapper. Oh. Alien <laughs> rising from the floor is a. If you remember Terminator 2. Oh yes. no 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 And, of course, at this point, we are looking at initiatives. How are you? The 20s got 11. Did you say it was stone down here? Yes. The fire's okay? Oh, yeah. But Moreau was like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't fireball here because, um... I don't have fireball. I want some of this stuff. <laughs> You can't take the stuff. You would. I will arrange to buy the damn stuff. Well, that's different. That's different, so yes, you can. That you can do. Ow! Alright. Son of a... Okay, Ow. so... Ow. The great... Wow, the great ooze initiative is a minus five. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's... That's bad. <laughs> it's going like next year. <laughs> next year. So I'm going on a negative one. Uh, <laughs> negative five. That's why I said next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> and the trapper is on a plus five. And he's going fast. With haste, I can cast two spells, right? Uh, uh no. No. Um, no, not in the in Pathfinder yeah. one. That was a change from a uh, third edition. Okay. It sucks because I. <laughs> Why? I was overpowered, they, is what that was. They nerfed everything. They nerfed time stops so badly. It pissed me off. Okay, so we are in the room. You still need to roll for, for Marova and Aurelia, babe. I know. Oh, I'm just keeping track. You know that. It's a girlfriend's oh. job, isn't it? How high is the ceiling? Oh, about 15 feet. Okay. <sighs> Marova is actually doing really well on initiative East today. Yeah. But I really hate. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably roll now. And um, can, uh, see and you next go. week, Aurelia. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we will have the trapper go first. Run over the gray ooze. Hey, eat the gray ooze. <laughs> eat the snack gallons. <laughs> eat the snack gallons. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, thank you. Was that out loud? Yeah, that was very out loud. Yeah. I feel sorry for your listeners that are watching the stream because uh, I didn't mean to do that. It don't worry, no one's watching. 
Tolana? Yes, sir. Uh, the big bad guy came up and just tried to hit your bestie, but missed. <laughs> You're up. Sounds good to me. Now you can either uh, go up and attack the ooze. The only problem with an ooze... You're not, you're not the hell sure where a um where the uh, vital parts of the ooze are, so it can't be critted or sneaked. Okay. But since he moved, I can't do it with her, can I? You actually, uh, you cannot do a wield on the first round if you go up and attack the ooze. Okay. Let me. See what I can do with the ooze. Hit, hit, and hit. Well, actually, but you would only get one hit. Yeah. So but it you hit were, it. But you hit it. And you did eight points of damage to it. Dead I'm good. Point. We got um, Big Ugly what? and, um, yeah, uh, Big Ugly can want, be critted. Can I, um, am I able to make a, like, an arcana check? Or does that take one of my actions, or, like? It would take a move action. But I'm, I don't think, uh, get to shoot on my... doing a skill check is not anything like that? Uh, it's not in, uh, first edition. Second edition, okay. Edition. Okay, go ahead and make an account of check. Yeah, I want to see if the ooze is, you know, if I know of any weaknesses, if it like fire or ice or anything like that. Let's okay. Um, you roll. Put it in the deep freeze. Natural one. <laughs> yep. My well, back is still talking. It, it looks like a big lava snot on the floor. Yeah, I'm just gonna, um... Do you have to describe it as snot? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take this round to Only test, you. Uh, flame you can come with that. <laughs> I cast Flame Arrow. Right. Okay, you cast Flame Arrow this round. Okay. Maroba. It's, it's a stone down here. What's Maroba yeah, got planned here? Maroba is coming, going to come over here to the corner. You can grab a flame strike on it. And Maroba. Look how big that thing is. You can center it on that thing and it won't damage it. If you're lucky. Won't hit anything. If you ask him, that may be gold that he might not. He will uh adjust it so he doesn't hit Arroya by here come the damaging spells. Oh, Kona cold. That figured. Yeah, and it doesn't damage anything. It makes it a little icy, but that's about it. Okay, it's got resist cold 10, so... Uh, so, he needs to make a save. Reflex plus 4. Uh, back. Uh, I made the save. So we'll take half, which would be um, 18. And then the, uh, and then the uh, kicks in, so he takes 8 points of damage. Kira? Oh, Kira. Yeah, if I... If I can do a flame strike, I'm a 
Trapper? Can I do it without hitting much? Or hitting any? Um, yeah, yeah, you around. can hit him. If you want to flame strike him, go ahead. Oh, don't, don't flame know. strike. Don't flame strike. Like that could damage the house. Well, that, that's my you're in the you're in a stone basement. I just want to... Can we say ouch that hurts? <laughs> Go ahead and flame strike. Okay. It needs to make a reflex save again. Which it makes, yeah. so it takes 14 points of damage, and it's got resist fire 10, so mm -hmm. it takes 4. But it did some. Yeah. Oh, Sakura. Uh-huh. Well, do I've got... Want, do you want to try a knowledge nature? Uh, uh, aberrations would be knowledge nature, right? Uh, aberration, I think, is arcana, actually. Either that or planes, possibly. Okay. So, which one would you like me to make? You don't have Arcana, do you? Uh, yes I do. Uh, yeah, hi. Yeah, Mister. Yeah, okay. Cleric of Mister. Uh, how about a 20? I'll give you that one. Okay. This is a trapper. It's a huge aberration. Okay. It has dark vision and scent. Uh, decent perception. Nah, okay, on the AC. It is amorphous. DR 10 slash slashing or piercing. Uh huh. Resist cold 10. Resist fire 10. Weakness. Uh -huh. Light sensitivity. Oh! Oh! Uh, well, uh, hold on one second. Let me make sure can, I have this. You, you normally do have the spell in memory. I certainly do, and I believe it's called a searing light is going off there at it. There you go, and it will take uh, 1.5 damage from that. I haven't even rolled it yet. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, it's. It's, uh, I guess, a normal creature. So it would be 21 uh -huh. times, uh, times 1.5, which would be. 31. Uh, 31. But then it takes 10 off because it's a fire based spell. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Uh, actually, no, it is not a fire based spell. No, it does nope. not specify. I, so I know that's another change they made to it in 2nd edition where it's half a. Uh, a positive half fire or so uh, but yeah 31 points i'll take it and it's a reflex save uh no it's a uh it's, it's a range touch for oh then uh yeah and and did you touch him uh i'm about to find that out here uh just to let you know he's got touch ac of nine uh, I do not roll a one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 31 points of damage. We'll take it. Ouch. That hurt it. That's a lot of ouch. <laughs> and since Aurelia is already in melee with this thing, and she, she uses a scimitar, a slashing weapon, it bypasses the DR. Aurelia is going to town. I figured as much. Leave it to my bestie. Ow. Uh, I out. will hit twice for a total of 26 damage. It's still up, but it's definitely looking worse for wear. Okay. It hasn't met me yet. <laughs> Still have to do something about this ooze here. <laughs> Torlana. 
Yes, sir. It needs a 20 to hit you, but just like me, no, it's attacking you. And I rolled an 8. I almost, almost rolled a 20, but not quite. Okay. Yes, sir. This trapper is pissed. Um, he pissed at? He's got to get through a lot of us to get to me? No, he pissed at, uh, he's pissed at Arroyo. Arroyo hurt him as well. Oh, yeah, but I hurt him more. Nope. I missed. Carolina? Yes, sir. You may dual wield your little uh, fanny off and uh, slash and hack on you. Oh. I love you that. You know I do. I'm going to play Slicey Dicey. Okay. Uh, uses Ace. Okay, yeah. Okay, ready for this? Yeah. The first attack, a 32, hits. The second attack, a 27, hits. The third attack, a 13, hits. They all hit. Uh, this creature's got an AC of 5. 10, 19... Uh, 24, 30, 35. Not quite dead, but God, you took a whole bunch off of it. Declan! What can you say, babe? Your girl knows how to do it. I got, um, my stature, I know the arrows, the fire probably won't hurt this thing, but I'm starting with this. Okay. Okay, the trapper is AC. I start with the not, ooze. Oh, the, the ooze, okay. Uh, and I got fire arrows. Okay, the ooze uh, is immune to cold and fire. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, it is not immune to acid. So that's 11 points right off the bat, and your first arrow kills the use. Okay. Thank you. So the rest are for the... Uh, the rest are on okay. this big bad boy. And uh, you do 11. <laughs> then 13, so... 24. Uh, rapid shot. Uh... 35, 40, uh, okay, guess what, you killed it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the trapper, okay, the ooze was a great ooze. Um, AC5, AC touch 5, AC flat pointed 5, 50 hit points, immune to cold and fire, plus 6 attack with a slam. Uh, pretty much. Okay. And the Trapper, AC-19, uh, 95 hit points. DR-10, slashing and piercing, resist cold 10, fire 10. Weakness is light sensitivity, plus 15 on the attack slam. Uh, okay. Upstairs. Okay, hold on. We also have another room we, in this uh, basement. We have it. Yeah, we still haven't checked here. Anyways, the beakers and vials are only all of good quality and suitable for use in magical research. There are a few items on the counters and shelves, obviously herbs and other magical components, pretty much ruined because of the prolonged exposure to the damp air. Um, 
the large book on the pedestal is the Half Dane Family Spellbook. You know, Roy is, I, I mean, uh, Moreau is. Yeah, I, I think we are time. all eyeing Moreau right now. It's like, uh. Oh, well, we'll oh. tell him what we found and I'll see if I can get it off of him. Okay. okay. That is fine, okay. but we're not taking it with us. No. Okay. Um. Pretty Don't much. Give me that look, Moreau, because I'm not doing it for you. <laughs> Bottom floor library, uh, the the library, um, pretty much a magical library in here. Uh, and many magic related subjects as astrology, rune stones, alchemy, folk magic, and others. Blah blah blah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then we go upstairs to the upper level. There is only uh, there is only one combat which you guys will actually walk through in the first freaking uh, uh, first freaking round against thought eaters with thirteen hit points each. Okay. So. Anyways, um, so you head back and you even go through the rest of the house, press the digitation, cleaning everything up. Yep. Okay, uh, you didn't damage a house. That's a good thing. Okay. Um, there, there is a book called where have all the monsters gone it's a children's book but it provides plus one saves versus fear and it was and it was on the ground floor um the main ground floor library hmm. there is a the crystal and the china set um, it still belong to the house? From the uh, dining room? Yeah. Say so what? Doesn't that belong to the house? Yeah, but he's possibly willing to sell some of this stuff. Oh, right, right. The crystal and china set, if you appraised it, which I'm guessing you did, is worth about $19,000. Uh, so so he had the good china out. Yep. Um, there is a potion of blue liquid, uh, which he's not sure what it does, but he will get rid of it for four hundred. Um, you got the earring. Wait. Um. Well, it belonged. To, that was the one that belonged to the servant girl. The queen right? lady. Yeah. Queen lady. Actually, belong to the dwarf. Okay. Yep. Uh, should we uh, return that along with the body as well? Yep. Hold on. I uh, would. There is a stone with a spell. Oh, he'll, he'll let you have the earring. Free of charge. It wasn't. It wasn't in the house. No, it was not originally in the house. But there is a spell stone. Uh. Um, that he will actually uh, let you guys buy for about 800 and, uh, and you can tell it's magic, but he's not sure what it does. 
and then the half Dane family spellbook, which you will sell for a thousand. And Marola will be buying that. I figured as much. <laughs> I will spend a thousand gold pieces for the spell book. Oh, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. Well, I got this. Dennis. Yes. What magic item were you having upgraded? Uh, it's going to be the. Uh... The uh, belt of uh, dexterity plus two I have. I'm upgrading that to a belt of physical might plus four. That's the dex con uh, belt. Okay. Uh, now it's going to cost me, uh, I think it's 36,000 north. Two items. But then again, Morova can actually craft that now, can he? Yes, he can. Okay, so cut that in half. What does the spell to token or spell coin or whatever do? You mean the stone? Yeah. I think it's like a one shot. Uh, casting it is it. a oh. one shot item, but I will show you. I will tell you in a second. I'm actually just. Um, okay. How much is the belt of physical might worth normally? Uh, normally 40,000. So, uh, if you take the difference of the, uh, plus two dex belt, which is 4,000, so that's 36. And then, uh, divide that in half for the, uh, crafting cost. I'll let you do the math on that. Uh, uh, that's 18,000. I'm just, I'm just creating the search. Certain. Now, Marola, now it's worth 40,000? Uh, yeah, 40,000, but again, this is uh, going to be an upgrade. That means Marola's going, Marola's actually, actually going to have to blow some dang with it. I can buy the item outright if you want. Okay, hold on. And magic item creation. Upgraded. From a belt of incredible dexterity. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Here are the items that you can get. Did uh, Did you want to buy the children's book? Uh, are we can. Uh, okay. Well, where have all the monsters gone? It's a popular children's story telling about tell of a young girl named Sarah who is always afraid of the monsters that lived in her cellar. One day she gathered her courage and went to the cellar when her mother needed some roots, but was unable to go down the stairs due to a broken foot. When she discovered there were no monsters in the cellar after all, she she learned that the monster's life when she lost her fear. The reader of this book gains immunity to fear effects for the duration of a tournament. 
if the reader is a bard and the book is read out loud, then all that Ming say here and understand the story get gain plus four to sage versus spear for the duration of the tournament. I take it we we're not grabbing this one, right? Nope. Okay. So Ow. Ow, that popped. I heard it. Ow, ow, ow. I'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Did you want to spend the 400 gold pieces on the blue potion? Well, we don't know what the blue potion does. True. <laughs> so, it's up to you. Ow. I'll spend, I'll spend it. <sighs> I'll pay 400. Um, the new potion, new potion is a half Dane handy remedy. The contents of the spell represent the pinnacle of the half Dane family's uh, magical achievements. The Sornate Crystal Vial is filled with a magical blue liquid that provides a small amount of light equivalent to a light spell with a 5 foot radius when held out in the open. In addition, this fruit has the ability to reduce stomach pains and alleviate discomfort. There ah. are two doses of the remedy in the vial, and if consumed, each dose will heal 1d4 hit points of damage and eliminate any poison in the bloodstream, effectively neutralizing a hangover <laughs> or other unpleasant effects from overindulgence. I guess it's a good thing I bought <laughs> the it. Only <laughs> <laughs> Declan. The remedy induces sleep for eight hours. No save. Persons who fall asleep cannot be awakened except by dispelling the magic of the remedy. It's a hangover cure, but once you drink it, you'll sleep for eight hours. Oh, so it's a, uh, it's Nyquil. Yeah. Yeah. So and Declan, uh, you spent four hundred. It's actually worth five hundred. Okay. I'll keep it, but um, I'll take the 200 I mean, off yeah, okay. myself and 200 from the game. Okay. Back. Does anybody want the stone? I don't think I need it. Well, the stone is a stone of escape. This magical stone is large and perfectly round. Measuring about two inches in diameter, weighing nearly a pound, is beautiful dark green color with blue white with bright white highlights. The stone is always clean, and no attempt to mire to mar its surface. The uh, mire. <laughs> What's it do? It is a one-shot item. Um, when thrown. The stone spell stone shatters and activates the dimensional gate for the user only, equivalent to a dimension door spell. Oh. Short right. How much yeah. do they want for it? Uh, he. Let's see what he want for this. He wanted eight hundred for it. No. Not really worth. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. Okay, so not gain. It was worth a thousand. Cool. But we won't get that one. Okay. Page two of the certs. I'll do the earring first. The earring is an earring of feather falling. I have the spell. Yeah, but this is a slotless item. The magical golden earring is fashioned <laughs> as a simple golden hoop made of finely polished gold that never tarnishes. This ring radiates a faint alteration magic if detected. This magical item 
will only function when worn properly by any humanoid race. The earring must be attached to a character's ear, nose, or navel in order for the magic to be effective. It functions as a ring of feather falling, but is considered slotless. If it's slotless, I mean, I'll, I'll put in for it if somebody else doesn't want it. Because I, I ride a griffin. If I fall off that thing, that could be helpful. Anybody else? He can have it. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to put it on my navel. I'm not. You can, you can also <laughs> have your... Painful yeah, I do. <laughs> Painful. Yeah. Finally, and Marola is buying this. Lip ring. And he will spend a thousand gold pieces. It's actually worth fifteen hundred. So he's making a little bit of money out of it. But the half dane family spell book. Oh, cool. Is everything on page three hundred and ninety four? Yep. Yep. Everything's on page um, three hundred and ninety-four. <laughs> he'll be he'll be going through and renumbering the pages. Um, massive Turn book page weighing nearly eight pounds and not <laughs> suitable for traveling. The book has a fine leather cover that is well cared for, and the edges of its rich page are gilded in gold. This book contains another number of magical spells. Readable with the Read Magic spell. These spells include Read Magic and Detect Magic, First Level Art, Charm Person, Sleep, Jump, Color Spray, Comp Languages, Floating Disc, and Wall of Fog. A lot of those I did not have. Second level Alter Self, Invisibility, Blur, Detect Thoughts, and Not. Third level spells Slow, Dispel Magic, Clairvoyance, Clair Audience. I didn't have either of those. And fly in the fourth level spell stone skin. And it is worth fifteen hundred gold. And I paid a thousand for it. So um so let me date these certs. Okay. I thought you were dating me, not the certs. <laughs> <laughs> Take the hey, take the <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that we need for today, or we um, else? I'll just let you know that tomorrow. Um, nobody's ever played through the mod tomorrow. It's an original. Really? Huh. That's yeah. This is something I wrote uh, about five years ago. Um. Okay, um, and and the end of um, that is on the end of page four, uh, two. There's only two pages worth of certs. There is your cert for your belt of physical might. Now, gotcha. I how much did I have? How much did, money did you have to spend? Um, I mean, I have enough for to buy it outright completely. No, how much money did you have to spend? Uh, it's going to be 18000 uh, if Morova's uh, crafting it. And so that would be 18 days, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I will spend a total of 20 on this module. And crafted... Sakura's belt. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here and uh, get a little more sleep before I have to go to work. So. All right. Get now, some tomorrow, sleep. Tomorrow's module is going to be LCRB 11 36, and it's going to be called Northern Lights. I know the connotation on that one. Okay. I know where he came up with the title. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, uh, have a good one. I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay. And if you're, if you're wondering, Northern Light,